morning and welcome to a special segment of the Willis Hour in which City Manager Hector Forstier will recap Tuesday's City Council meeting. The City Council meetings cover an agenda published 72 hours prior through various mediums, including the Courier, City Hall, and the City of Willis's website, www.ci.willis.tx.us. If you'd like to join in the conversation, please feel free to contact the City of Willis at 936-856-4611. The Willis Hour is on the first and third Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. Good morning. My name is Hector Forestier. I'm the city manager in Willis, Texas, and with me this morning is our city uh, public work director. And we both want to wel uh, welcome you to the uh, Willis Air Hour and uh, wish each one of you a happy new year. We'll have the uh, city council wrap up, which occurred this past Tuesday, the 21st at 5.30. We started the meeting with a public hearing uh, in order to uh, gather permission from the city council to demolish a dilapidated home uh, in located on Golden Street, 406 Golden Street. This item was tabled last uh, month due to the fact that we had not received confirmation from the post office that the owners had received the actual letter letting them know that we were going to have a public hearing to be uh, looking at their property. In the meantime, we had received the confirmation and uh, last night the council listened to the presentation from the uh, code enforcement officer and allow the owner 90 days to uh, decide if he or she wants to uh, uh, renovate the home or demolish the home themselves or allow the city to demolish the home. And if the city does it, we will put a lien into it. So uh, we're looking at probably within the next 90 days making the decision by the owners if they're going to renovate it or let it demolish. Uh, from there, we went to... Uh, the first item of business, which was the uh, uh, to hear the uh, results of the audit, is customary at the end of the fiscal year, and the city of Willis works on a uh, fiscal year basis, starting October the first through September the thirtieth, to have an audit performed to check on the finances and make sure that everything is run efficient. Uh, we actually have a clean bill of health by the uh, auditor, Bob Vaz Van Vazanova. Uh, at the end, he, made a he actually made a statement that the city has been run very efficient regarding the uh, finances uh, of, the, of the same. And uh, <clears throat> also under new business, and by the way, uh, good morning, everyone. This is Arthur Fiello, uh, Director of Public Works, as uh, Hector mentioned earlier in the show. Uh, the next item of new business uh, was to uh, consider approval of an election services agreement with Montgomery County, and uh, then immediately after that was uh, consider approval for a joint election agreement with Montgomery County. Hector, can you tell us a little bit about that? Again, this is a, a, a customary thing. Every year we contract with uh, Montgomery County in order to conduct the elections. Uh, in this particular one, we are having a charter review as uh, you know, Arthur, in 2011, the legislation through uh, adopting Senate Bill 100 allows cities to make changes to when the elections of the cities can, will take place. And uh, in this case, the city council uh, decided that they will have, instead of having staggered election, they will have one election for all the positions on the odd year. So in order to do that, we need to actually have a change to the charter, which mentions that we have elections every other year, staggered positions. So this will allow us to fix the charter and at the same time uh, allow for the council to be voted in uh, once every two years, uh, starting in 2015, in May of 2015. The election for this particular charter review will take place on May the 10th of 2014, and uh, we will provide more information as, as it becomes available. 
Very good. Uh, the next item of new business was to award the bid for the Calhoun uh, sewer lift station and also some gravity sewer and force main uh, for that lift station. And uh, we received those bids uh, yesterday morning and we uh, made the award to the low bidder. And the low bidder was 5T Utilities. Uh, the award was uh, granted in the amount of $250,000, 750000 Seven hundred sixty-four and eighteen cents, um, and that includes uh, the, again the the lift construction of the lift station, uh, installation of gravity sewer down to the lift station, and a force main from that lift station over to the newly redone Hill Street lift station. In addition to uh, this, uh, there was uh, a little over two hundred seventy thousand uh, dollars budgeted for the project, and. Uh, likely there will be a change order issued uh, sometime in the next month or so uh, to add some additional SCADA work there since there's still some money available in that project. Uh, we had several items that we uh, basically put on a wish list and then set them aside because we weren't sure where the bids were going to come in and uh, because they came in under what was budgeted we're going to go ahead and utilize the remaining funds and add some of the things uh, that we would like to have down there. Uh, to help us monitor that lift station. Also, Arthur, since you're talking about lift station, can you give us an update on uh, Hill, St Hill Street lift station? Yes, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Hill Street lift station is just newly rehabilitated. Actually, it's a brand new lift station. We built a new one immediately across the street, across Danville, from where it used to be located. It used to be located on the uh, northwest corner of Old Danville and Hill Street. And it's been there for, for a long, long time. Uh, it was old and dilapidated. We uh, originally started to rebuild it in that location, but decided that uh, that wasn't the best thing to do. And we acquired some property immediately across the street from it and built a brand new lift station there to replace that old lift station. It is online and it's functioning well. Um, we have a few last minute punch list items to take care of, but otherwise uh, we've got a brand new lift station there. It's a very nice lift station and it's doing a very good job for us. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda was to uh, request approval from the council to allow to hire a new person for public works. Uh, we usually don't do this. However, Arthur, will you mind explaining us why we had to go to council to seek permission? Certainly. Uh, we have a, uh, a candidate that I interviewed. We, ac we have three positions available right now. Um, two laborers and a, and a street supervisor position and uh, this particular position is, is a laborers position interviewed a gentleman by the name of Sherman Strouder and he happens to be the cousin of one of our employees uh, who works in the, the office there at City Hall and per the personnel policy whenever we want to hire someone who's related to someone who works in the city already we have to get city council's approval to do that. Uh, in this case, uh, as I mentioned, he's uh, related. He's a cousin of one of our employees, and uh, he will not be working directly with his cousin per se. He'll be working in the public works department. But again, personnel policy requires to get approval from the city council. Uh, I'd like to add too that uh, we have a very, it's been very difficult to find employees um, lately. and. Uh, what I want to caveat that with is that that's not the, the reason why we want to hire this young man. Uh, basically, even if he wasn't related to one of our employees, the fact of the matter is he did a very good job in the interview, and I think he'll fit really well with our with our crew. So, uh, you know, relationship aside, uh, we still would have made him an offer, and we're very interested in hiring him. Good, good. Uh, we are almost halfway through the meeting uh, agenda from last night and before we take a break uh, you mentioned that you have uh, two other vacancies or those are new positions if I recall that's correct yes we have uh, the council was generous enough to grant us three new positions this last uh, budget cycle like, as I mentioned earlier two labor positions and one street supervisor position and the, the goal is uh, to establish an actual streets uh, division we have a streets division on paper. In other words, we have a budget for it. But because Willis has historically been so small, uh, 
everyone shares in all the duties. And my goal by hiring this uh, street supervisor and two additional laborers is to actually get a streets division started where we have employees that are dedicated to doing the work in the streets division, such as uh, taking care of the parks, dealing with uh, drainage, uh, actual street repair, replacing signs, and those types of things. Good, good. As I mentioned, we are halfway through the agenda. We will take a break now for, uh, for a few minutes and uh, hope that you join us back in a couple of minutes. You're listening to The Willis Hour on Lone Star Internet Radio. Hi, this is Erica Tullis, Executive Director of the Breast Cancer Charities of America. The Breast Cancer Charities of America is a national nonprofit organization with our headquarters in the Woodlands, Texas. We focus on non-invasive breast cancer research and helping the true patient that is going through breast cancer. Through our Help Now Fund, we help women pay the rent and utilities while going through their breast cancer treatment. It's unlike any other program that truly is out there. We are here to help the woman. Our phone number is 936-231-8460. For more information or to get involved or to even make a donation, please visit our website, www.igopink.org. Lone Star Internet Radio is now bringing you the weekly business hour show each Monday morning at 11 a.m. My name is Rick Schistler and I will be your host. Each week we will be bringing you local, area, and national business news that you can use. The program will also feature an interview with a local or national business person who will share their own experiences, successes, and failures in operating their businesses. Our show is for anyone who already owns a business, whether they work solo or have employees and for those who are thinking about starting their own businesses. A bit of information about myself. Again, my name is Rick Schisler, and I am a Silver Fox advisor who has over 40 years experience as a serial entrepreneur. As a part of our show, I will offer some advice and encouragement on our monthly topic, and I will take your questions by email at rschisler at silverfox.org or call into the station at 936 647 3776. See you on the radio Monday at 11 a.m. for the weekly business hour. You're listening to the Willis Hour on Lone Star Internet Radio. Welcome back. This is Hector Forstier, city manager from the city of Willis, and with me is uh, Arthur Faello, our director of public works, and we are at the council wrap up that occurred on the 21st of January. Arthur? Okay, uh, we left off talking about uh, getting uh, city council approval for hiring uh, a new employee in the uh, public works department. And um, the next item uh, is to cover a couple of uh, ordinances um, that we talked about last night. These were first readings, and the first one of those is to uh, consider an ordinance calling for an election to amend uh, the city home rule charter by uh, an amendment. Um, and then the next one is to consider an ordinance calling for an election to reauthorize the local sales and use tax for uh, basically street maintenance. Yes, as I mentioned before, uh, we will be conducting an election in May the 10th of 2014. And it, the first item on that particular uh, election is to it's a review of the charter, and it's due to the fact that we changed the way we do voting in the city of Willis. Instead of having stagger uh, year elections uh, for each one of the positions, we now decided that we will have every two years in the odd year, starting in 2015, uh, all the positions will be up for grab, the mayor and the five council members. The, o- the other item that will be included in that particular uh, election is every four years we have to go back to the citizens and au- uh, reauthorize the uh, street improvement tax. It's about a fourth of a percent that is uh, given uh, basically to the director of public works for him to continue working on the uh, improve- improving the uh, road systems throughout the city. So those two items will be on the, adge- uh, on the election for 2014. Actually, that was the uh, the end of the meeting. We had some reports, and I'm going to ask Arthur to give us some updates 
regarding the uh, Calhoun uh, Calhoun lift station. When when do you foresee that happening? Uh, well, we as we uh, discussed a little bit earlier, we awarded the bid last night. Uh, I anticipate them getting started in the next couple of weeks uh, okay. with that project. And uh, we are pretty excited, Arthur. We have both of the new Catahoula wells working. Uh, and it hasn't been an easy easy task for you. I know there's been some glitches, and you've been working long hours during the day uh, and during the weekend. So I, I, I really appreciate that personally. But please give us some background on what happened. Okay. Uh, the, pr the wells are up and running, as, as you mentioned, uh, and, they're, and they're running well. Uh, we've had some technical difficulties uh, uh, primarily with uh, chlorination and things like that, you know, we've we've been able to successfully chlorinate properly, but not without a, a great deal of effort. Um, so there's some improvements that need to be made there, so that we don't have to work so hard on a daily basis to to get this uh, system to work properly. And that's been the, the primary uh, focus for the last uh, few weeks while running these wells is just making sure you know we stay on top of it and keep the chlorination system working properly. Um, but otherwise, they're they're running well. Uh, we still haven't done the final walkthrough with the with the contractor yet. We need to do that, and they'll uh, there'll be a punch list. Obviously, uh, hopefully, it'll be a short one, and we can get through it and get things wrapped up. Last year, halfway through the fiscal year, the city issued about 5.8 million dollars worth of uh, bond for street improvements. Uh, that covers four major thoroughfares in the city of Willis: uh, MLK, Paddock. Uh, Campbell and uh, Rogers. You want to give us a little bit of uh, upgrade on that? Certainly. Um, okay, on the uh, Rogers Road, or let me let me back up. We'll go to Paddock. Uh, Paddock. We're going to do. Uh, obviously, we're going to go through. And we're going to widen the road where we can. We don't have a whole lot of room to widen it, but in places where we can, we will. Um, and part of that project, obviously. Um, the smart way to do road projects is to make sure that your utility infrastructure in the ground is taken care of uh, either in good shape before you start or at least take care of it simultaneously so that you don't have to come back and tear up your brand new road and fix a line that, that may break or may be leaking. So as part of these projects, and this goes for all of the roads that I'm uh, getting ready to talk about, we're going to go through and we're going to make sure that the water and sewer is in good condition. We're going to replace what we need to replace or pipe burst uh, what we need to pipe burst and make point repairs and those types of things and uh, make drainage improvements and then come through and uh, basically put a new road down. Uh, that's going to be happening with uh, Roger or I'm sorry, Paddock. Uh, that should be coming up relatively pretty uh, relatively soon. Um, one of the other roads in this particular bond issue was uh, Rogers Road. And we've already done a great deal of the uh, sanitary sewer televising. Um, and the work for the sanitary sewer rehab on all of these roads is going to start probably, uh, I anticipate, sometime next week. Um, we went through a uh, went through HGAC by and um, secured a contractor through that process to come out and do the sewer rehab. And uh, they're already lined up everything's ready to go for them to start that project. We had a, uh, some issues to overcome with the uh, Union Pacific Railroad as it relates to Rogers Road in uh, securing and updating agreements for right-of-way and water line crossings. And so that one uh, kind of put Rogers Road behind. So that one will probably come in behind some of the others. Um, South Campbell will most likely come next um, while we're trying to iron out these issues with Rogers Road. South Campbell, and that runs basically between South Bend and Montgomery Street, is going to be similar. And we're going to go through there. We're going to take care of uh, wet utilities, you know, water and sewer infrastructure, and then widen the road where we can, come back in and, and put a new surface down. Um, and same thing with uh, MLK. Um, and again, these are all uh, part of the 2013 bond issue that we did um, just trying to make sure we we take care of some of the the main thoroughfares in Willis uh, before we move on and start focusing on some of the surface streets great great uh, we're making progress a couple of personnel notes that I wanted to uh, bring up uh, before we uh, we say bye to uh, the audience uh, our assistant city secretary Marisa Quintanilla has uh, actually 
pass her second test of the certification through the Texas Municipal League, and we want to congratulate her on that uh, big achievement. And lastly, uh, two weeks ago, uh, I hired uh, an assistant city manager, a lady by the name of Marge Littleton, who has uh, experience in uh, small cities and large cities. She's uh, a native of uh, California, went to uh, college at Fresno State, got an MPA, and uh, came to Texas and worked for the city of Sugarland. I'm looking forward to working with her. She's going to be a good asset and brings uh, quite a bit of experience in the uh, parks area, which will be uh, very well needed as we embark in an undertaking of uh, a new park in the city of Willis that will comprise about 24 acres in uh, over in Rogers Road. Uh, I want to, before we say goodbye, again, wish everybody a happy new year. Uh, hope that uh, the new year brings you many blessings and uh, thank uh, Dick and the family for allowing us to have this uh, Willis Hour. Arthur. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here and it's great to be part of the Willis Hour. You're listening to the Willis Hour on IRLoneStar.com. Our community's animal shelters cannot absorb accidental litters of kittens and puppies. Approximately 80% of the animals entering our shelters will not make it out alive. Please help be a part of the solution. Please spay and neuter your pets. Many low-cost options are available. Visit TexasLitterControl.org to learn more. That's TexasLitterControl.org. And remember, real Texans don't litter. Please spay and neuter your pets. Howdy, howdy, folks. Cable Smith, host of the Lone Star Outdoor Show, inviting you to join me Saturday mornings from 7 to 8 on Lone Star Internet Radio for Texas' premier hunting, fishing, and outdoor talk show. So pour yourself another cup of coffee and pull up that stool a little closer to the old campfire because if you can catch it or kill it in Texas, we're going to talk about it. That's right. Bucks and ducks, gobblers, monster bass, redfish, trout, and a whole lot more. Plus, you never know what outdoor celebrity is going to drop by from Phil, the duck commander Robertson, to fishing legend Bill Dance, or everybody's favorite uncle Ted Nugent. Heck, we might even mix in an interview and hear some brand spanking new Texas music from one of your favorite Texas musicians like Robert Earl Keane, Brandon Ryder, or the honky-tonk kid himself, Aaron Watson. Loved or hated but never ignored, it's the Lone Star Outdoors show with me, Cable Smith, Saturday mornings from 7 to 8 right here on Lone Star Internet Radio on IRLoneStar.com. You're listening to the Willis Hour on Lone Star Internet Radio. Good afternoon. Thanks for listening here to Lone Star Internet Radio. My name is Lauren Swanke, and I'm with 1097 Willis Monthly News. We're the hometown newspaper for Willis, Texas, and we're so glad to be here with you once again this month here on Lone Star Internet Radio. And I'm really excited today because it's a little bit of a different format than what we've done the last couple of months, and I'm just really uh, glad to have with me a couple of friends here in the studio. And I've got with me today the district manager of Cilantro's Mexican Grill. Hi, Mo. Got so glad you're here. This is Mo Azim, and he's going to be visiting with me today about Cilantro's and the, the business that they have. They actually have five locations all over this area, one of which is there in Willis. There's also in the Woodlands, Montgomery, Kingwood, and 1960. And so I'm so glad to have Mo with me today. And then also I have with me Gene Cook, and it's a real treat. How are you doing, Gene? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Great. I'm so glad to have Gene here with me as well. He is our account representative with 1097, and he also has, uh, has a, a really unique dance ministry. It is Steps in Faith. It's a ballroom dance ministry. You've probably heard of it because there's been a lot of buzz in Montgomery County here lately, and I'm so glad for him to be here with us today on Lone Star Internet Radio to talk a little bit about 1097 and a lot about Steps in Faith. And so I'm glad to have these guys here with me today. I hope you guys enjoy our our segment of the program on the Willis Hour. And so we're going to jump in. I'm going to start out visiting with Mo about Cilantro's Mexican Grill. Mo, if you want to start us out and just tell me a little bit about yourself, that would be great. Well, as most uh, people experience, I started out as uh, going to uh, working in a restaurant business as a high school student. So I started out as serving tables at my family-owned restaurant here in the Woodlands. Okay. And uh, it's an Indian cuisine. 
and worked there for over nine years and got all my experience from there and from then on moved forward with other restaurants and uh, finally got to an opportunity with Cilantro's here in Willis, Texas and uh, Cilantro's do operate five locations surround in the surrounding neighborhoods and uh, I got the opportunity to serve the community here in, in Willis and uh, here I am. That's great. Man, we just, we really enjoy cilantro. I know our family um, has enjoyed it so much recently here. I was telling uh, Jean and then Mo as well, we ate there um, just the other night, and I was so impressed with the family-friendly atmosphere on a Saturday night being out with my kids, and I had a couple of my nieces there with me as well. Super impressed with the atmosphere for a family, um, even on a Saturday night, which tends to be a little more rowdier crowds um, that are out sometimes, and so I just really enjoyed that about cilantro. But I'm going to get you to tell about cilantro's because I know that you are going to be the expert in that area. So if you will just tell us about the restaurant, you, the type of food, food you guys serve, the atmosphere, mm. just anything that you uh, you want to share. Cilantro's uh, originally started about 12 years ago on FM 1960 and 45. Uh, they, they've been around the, around Houston area for over 12 years and cilantro's is unique in terms of family-friendly environment you know uh, we're very kids friendly mm -hmm. uh, we do offer a kid it free on Sundays yeah. uh, and uh, uh, as far as uh, the uniqueness of management our management team comes from our wait staff okay so we don't just go out and hire managers we we build our own team I love that and that's how the managers are so touching you know they go visit the customers they you know they they check on the tables and stuff, and they want to make sure that the customers are satisfied. Yeah. And uh, that's our main goal. Every customer that walk into our restaurant, they want to feel that specialness where with the management coming and yeah. visiting each and every. Usually, you go to d dining at different restaurants. You have the ser wait you only see the wait staff. You mm -hmm. don't see mm -hmm. the management team running around and stuff. But at our locations, no matter what location you go to, you always see a manager on the floor involved with the with the customers and with the employees right i love that that is something i've noticed as well the other night i was very impressed with um you know senior leadership there coming through checking on us making sure that everybody was comfortable and that our needs were met i was very impressed with that and the friendliness of y'all staff too you guys Absolutely. have a super friendly staff a, gr a great group of folks there Thank at you. cilantro's um if you're just tuning in i'm so glad you guys have joined us today we're here on lone star internet radio and i'm lauren swanke with 1097 i've got moa zim here with me. He's the district manager of Cilantro's Mexican Grill in Willis. They also have four additional locations throughout the area. So obviously this is a Montgomery County station. Um, you, you know, for those of you that are in the Woodlands, you might be saying, well, you know, Willis is a little far for us. The good news is there's a location there in the Woodlands, Absolutely. 1960 Kingwood and Montgomery. And we were just talking about Cilantro's and some of the things about the restaurant that make it special. Um, I want you to tell us a little bit about the food at Cilantro, something that makes it unique or just the type of food that you guys serve absolutely uh, when you think of Mexican food you always think about fajitas and enchiladas but uh, we do offer a wide variety of seafood mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, and you know we have we use tilapia and then also we use quail mm -hmm. ribs when you when you want to eat ribs you want to go to a barbecue restaurant but cilantro's have one of the best ribs anybody can ever taste yeah I mean they're mouth-watering they're tender and uh, uh, seafood is also the same way, you know, great seafood. Um, besides that, we have kids' menu where kids can have their hamburgers if they want to and kids' enchilada, quesadillas. Yeah. Uh, it's so. a great menu, a very a, a, <clears throat> a menu with great variety. Absolutely. Sure. We, you know, there's an article we do every month in 1097 called The Willis Kitchen. And um, last, I believe it was in our December issue, Lauren Gottlieb wrote the article about cilantro's. And I read it. The article came to me probably at 1030 at night. And I sat and read it. And she talked a lot about the type of food that you guys have and did a great job describing it. And I tell you, I was ready for dinner. And it, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it was yes. really kind of disappointing because it was so late. I, I was like, man, I, I want some cilantro is now for sure but um you know just great food great staff uh, a great environment for family something that mo mentioned a little while ago is that kids eat free on sundays that's not normal mo no. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> usually you know you hear about kids eat free and it's on an off day of the week right. you guys pick a really great day for Sunday, you know people tend to go to church and mm -hmm. after church 
families like to go out and stuff and that's a very good benefit where you know kids can enjoy have a good time and then they also receive a discount without having to ask for it yeah that's a mm-hmm. huge deal that's a really big deal so for every adult meal that's purchased you get a kid's meal Absolutely. free love that i mean that's just a, a great value um just uh, uh, just real quick being in the willis community we're so glad you guys are a part of the willis community involved in different activities and that type thing for those of you guys that are in the willis community we just want to encourage you to get out and support local businesses it's such a huge thing it's it's easy to get accustomed to to driving in and or you know leaving willis to go and uh, have dinner or one thing or another but i just encourage you guys to get out and support those local businesses that are right there in our hometown and uh, let's let's keep them thriving keep them keep them alive in in the community and uh, show them our appreciation we appreciate you guys mo i'm so glad you've been here with me today just real quick uh, cilantro's mexican grill is located at 12501 canyon falls boulevard there in willis and their number is 856-6200 real quick one thing i did forget you guys also offer catering absolutely is there any limit as far as the size parties that you can cater to there is no limit we can start out from as low as 10 people all the way to 500,000 people if we need to and you know any events birthday parties uh, anniversaries uh, wedding rehearsals i do a lot of wedding rehearsals and have done in 2013 cool so that's great well and even the facility is a great size facility it's comfortable you guys have plenty of room there in the restaurant it's really comfortable um you know i just i i can't say enough good about you all and i appreciate you guys being a part of willis being a part of 1097 support in the paper and coming alongside we just are excited to get to know you thank you and not only caterings uh, on site but off site as well you know if people have facility where they want the food to be catered we'll be more than happy to go and set up our own thing and you know serve the food that's a big deal. That's yes. great. If you're looking for good food, whether it's there at on site at Cilantro's or maybe you've got an event coming up and you're looking for the, the perfect restaurant to cater, Cilantro's is a great option. I encourage you guys to give him a call. Mo over at Cilantro's Mexican Grill. He is the district manager and here he's here with us today on Lone Star Internet Radio. Again, they're located at 12501 Canyon Falls Boulevard and you can reach him at 936-856-6200. Um, and maybe you're thinking, okay, where is Canyon Falls Boulevard. It's out on the west side, out towards uh, the lake, and not far out of town at all. If you pass Kroger, headed out towards uh, the lake on FM 1097 West, they're right there on the right-hand side in Canyon Falls Shopping Center. Um, and I, I tell you, you won't you won't be disappointed. They do a great job. Mo, thanks for being here with us Thank today. You. Thank yes, you. sir. Now I'm going to jump over to Mr. Gene Cook. Gene, as I said earlier, is our account representative with 1097. Um, he is a founder of t- of Steps in Faith ballroom dance ministry gene i'm so glad you're here today too oh thank you it's good to be here yeah we're gonna have fun i want to tell i want you to tell our listeners today about he you just have such a a broad sorry about that a broad uh variety of experience and so i was going to ask you to start us out and just tell us about your experience in ballroom dance uh well actually my experience in ballroom dance uh began back in the late 70s um i had a dance company at the time and uh, we've been dancing together and dancing worldwide, uh, doing fashion shows and stuff like this for Esprit de Corps. And uh, we had done a special on PM Magazine, and um, it was seen uh, by an agent out of uh, Florida uh, who books dance teams on ships. So the problem there was that you also had to teach ballroom if you were part of the dance team. So we decided we would uh, take time away from the group and uh, get ready to go on this uh this venture out to dance on cruise ships and um so we went to fred astaire and uh, uh started learning uh not only how to dance but how to teach we ended up enjoying it so much that we stayed there for over a year before uh, they could get us out to the ships and uh then after we went to the ships we um we worked uh, ships for about 10 years i guess teaching ballroom to hundreds of people uh four times a week on cruise ships so we uh, really loved to teach, and uh, then after getting off the ships, um, went to Tyler, Texas, and opened a dance studio, and um, a ballroom dance studio. Uh, worked there for uh, quite a while, and uh, then moved back to this area about 12 years ago, I guess, and um, then um, uh, had kind of gotten away from ballroom for a little while. Uh, the problem there was that uh, the money side of Teaching ballroom at a studio was a, a real problem with me uh, having to, because uh, it's pretty expensive to learn to dance. And uh, 
and it was really hard to push people uh, into buying lessons and things like that. And that was one reason why I got out of the business. Uh, but then, uh, after moving here, uh, some years later, I was working at an uh, incredible pizza company here in Conroe as director of guest services, and I had a vision one night, and uh, the vision was to start a ballroom dance ministry and to teach free dance classes. So needless to say, my first question when I woke up the next morning was, what do you mean free dance classes? <laughs> Uh, that was quite an extreme from uh, actually leaving the business sure. because of charging right. to go to doing free classes. But um, praise God, uh, I was obedient. I listened to him, and uh, I started the ministry, and he, um, he takes care of that. He that's takes care great. of the ministry. Very cool. Now, that's a real interesting concept. I think people, to hear ballroom dance ministry there, you know, might be kind of thinking, okay, well, how does that work? What does that actually mean? Um, and so if you will just kind of tell about if somebody was interested, tell me how it works. Well, uh, yeah, I've, I've gotten that a lot. Uh, you know, I get, uh, we have a website. Uh, it's actually uh, stepsinfaith.org. And, um, uh, and on there, we, uh, of course, have uh, our vision uh, for uh, and our mission for this, uh, for this ministry. And um, I get a lot of calls, and people say, well, how can you do that? How, how can you teach for free? Uh, well, the way it works is this. We, uh, when it comes to group classes, we consider anything over 10 people a group class. I do teach private lessons as well. Of course, there's minimal charge for that. Uh, it's not really part of the free dance class ministry, uh, but it's like less than half of what they'd pay for if they went to a studio. And um, But uh, even with dance classes, group classes at studios, they can be quite expensive. Mm -hmm. But uh, we just have, uh, and I say we because I've incorporated six other people. Uh, Kenny and Lauren Gottlieb uh, were my first students ever for this ministry, and I taught them to dance. And uh, and then they went on their honeymoon and came back and, and uh, had a vision that uh, they were supposed to help with this ministry. So they wanted to learn to teach, and um, so I worked with them on all the dances and taught them both parts, men and ladies, to both of them, and, and not just how to dance it, but how to teach it. Since then, I've incorporated uh, some of our um, young adults uh, that were youths, actually, when they started training with me from our youth ministry at church and uh, teaching them how to teach so they could help with it because some of the classes we've taught uh, since we started this ministry two and a half years ago have been over 200 people. Mm -hmm. And it takes more than just myself or a couple of people to help to, to handle that, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to mm -hmm. assist all the people. But uh, to answer the, the question as far as how can you do it for free, uh, we do accept love offering. Uh, this is a ministry. We're doing this really to to spread the news about our Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in doing that and being faithful with that, he blesses the ministry. So actually, um, it uh, has turned out to where, uh, with the love offerings that have come in from the different events and functions and churches and organizations that uh, we've had the, uh, the pleasure to, to be at and to teach, uh, probably brought in more than what it would have if we'd have been charging. Mm -hmm. And that's the way God works. So uh, that's that that's how it all works. Very cool. So if you, you know, as far as groups that might be interested, a church group, a school group, mm -hmm. an organization, maybe a seniors group, mm -hmm. um, any, there's any number of groups that may be interested in oh, sure. contacting you. If somebody wanted to get in contact, how'd they go about doing that? Uh, well, I mean, they can call me, uh, my cell number, 936-499-5587. Uh, uh, they can go to our website, which I mentioned, uh, which is stepsinfaith.org. has all that information, contact information on there. Uh, they can call or text me. They can email me uh, at gene at uh, stepsinfaith.org. And um, I, I do want to mention, too, that uh, one of the events that we did, uh, it was a singles group from uh, from several churches in the woodlands. They have a large singles group there. And uh, this was in Gidding, Giddings, Texas. They had a retreat. And so uh, they wanted us to, to come up and teach. And uh, some of the uh, people involved in, in that particular group uh, had been to some of our classes that we taught at the community center in, uh, in Willis. And uh, though, so word spread and um, uh, long story short, we went, we taught five different classes that day. And uh, so we drove there, taught, and then drove back that evening. And um, uh, it doesn't matter who it is, 
where it is, how far it is, what group it is. Uh, it's for everybody. It doesn't matter what age is. Uh, the ages when we taught the father and daughter dance at Woods Edge Church in the Woodlands was it ranged from five years of age to 86 years of age. Uh, so, which by the way, we taught them a salsa slice, which is a ballroom um, a, a line dance that I choreographed for our youth at church. And uh, so ballrooms never had a line dance before, but I actually choreographed one uh, so everybody can learn, didn't have to have a partner. Uh, and, uh, and it went over really well with the youth at church. And uh, so we ended up teaching that to this uh, over 220 people at Woods Edge for their father-daughter dance, and they just loved it. And uh, so it was just great to see that range, that age range, 5 to 86, out there all doing the same thing and having fun. Uh, and again, uh, we, there was no charge for it, and, uh, but the love, love offerings was amazing, simply amazing. And it just goes on and on. We've, we've been at North Shore Church in uh, uh, Bentwater and uh, did a Valentine's Day party. Uh, their last year. Uh, we've been at Corinthian Point uh, uh, for their yearly uh, party uh, for their members. And so it, it's varied. It's mm -hmm. varied. So it's easy to get a hold of us, and uh, we are mobile, and we'll come to you. That's great. Man, you can't beat that. We've had some great conversation here today on Lone Star Internet Radio, and I'm just really glad to have you guys listening in. I do have with me Jean Cook with Steps in Faith and also Moazim with Cilantro's Mexican Grill. And I'm Lauren Swanky with 1097. We're talking about Willis today here on the Willis Hour. I did want to mention one last thing. Mo, I, I failed to mention you guys' website. You guys have the full menu there on your website. Absolutely. And what is that? www dot cilantros with an s mexican grill dot com okay good deal well you've got all the contact information here today on lone star internet radio if you have any questions listen in check it out visit them on their websites it's good stuff thanks guys for being here with me today one thing i forgot to mention yes is sir if uh, willis location in also offers delivery service oh man so uh, our ordering system is in place on our website and they can go on there place the order, make a payment, and Willis will go ahead and deliver the food. Hey, that is so. too cool. And that's special for Willis. So lots yes. of cool stuff for Willis here today, talking about Cilantro's Mexican Grill and also uh, Steps in Faith Dance Ballroom Dance Ministry. Could I mention one quick thing? Absolutely. I hope uh, that I didn't get to mention. Just uh, wanted to let the county know to, uh, to be aware, be ready be following our uh, website because uh, later in the year and we're at this point gearing towards May we will be uh, doing a, a Guinness World Book record uh, for the world's largest ballroom dance class so cool. we're expecting over 5,000 people for this event that will be held in Willis and uh, so details to follow very good lots Absolutely. of lots of good things happening within the Willis community thanks for listening here we're gonna take a break on Lone Star Internet Radio you're listening to the Willis Hour on IRLoneStar.com. Hi, I'm Joyce with The Corner Pub in downtown Conroe. We're located at the corner of Simonton and North Main, just across the street from the courthouse. The week starts off Monday with Open Mic, hosted by Alan, and Tuesday night's Open Mic, hosted by Jeremy Bankhead. And on Thursday evening, McFarland Jams. There's nightly drink specials available every night, all night. And don't forget, live entertainment every weekend. To see a full list of events, visit our website at thecornerpubinconroe.com. So come join us at the Corner Pub, where the deli is open late. Let's go to Luke and Bob, Texas. <laughs> Tired of Waylon, Willie, and the boys? Join me, Gordon Lockhart, for Beethoven, Bach, and the Boys every Saturday from 8 to midnight on Lone Star Classical Music After Dark. Symphonies, concertos, and sonatas by composers such as Mozart, Tchaikovsky, and Bernstein. That's Lone Star Classical Music After Dark every Saturday from 8 to midnight on IRLoneStar.com. You're listening to the Willis Hour on IRLoneStar.com.
We're back here on Lone Star Internet Radio. I'm Lauren Swanke with 1097 Willis Monthly News. I have with me also Gene Cook. He's our account representative with 1097. We were just talking about his ballroom dance ministry, Seps and Faith, and we also had with us Mo Azim of Cilantro's Mexican Grill. And I'm so glad to be with you guys today, once again sharing with you about the cool things happening within the Willis community. And I'm going to start out, this month's issue is available all throughout Willis. There's about 45 locations that you can pick them up or sit down and and read them. Maybe it's in your uh, salon or, you know, in the waiting area of your favorite restaurant there in the community. Um, You can pick up a copy of 1097 Willis Monthly News. You can also visit us online at 1097.net. And so I'm just going to go over a few highlights from this month's paper, starting with the fact that the city of Willis has hired an assistant city manager. That's been a big deal. Uh, You might have seen it throughout the community that that was coming. And so we're really excited to welcome Margaret Littleton um, to the, the staff there in the city of Willis and her role is going to be very important with the the coming progress that you'll see within the community and really excited about seeing her join the staff and the city of Willis. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about her. Margaret Littleton is the former uh, recreation program coordinator for the city of Sugar Land and she began her role as assistant city manager for the city of Willis on January 6th. Uh, Littleton's primary role will be advisement to the Economic Development Corporation and the Community Development Corporation. I talked with Margaret, um, actually it was uh, towards the end of December, close to Christmas, and she said she's planning to help to grow the EDC and CDC and to go with Mr. Forrester, talking about the city manager, Hector Forrester, um, his vision to see Willis grow to the forefront of Montgomery County. And um, her role is really important because she is going to provide advisement to the EDC and the CDC there within the community. They have a really important role. Um, They've got a lot of things coming that are very exciting. They have festivals uh, that they facilitate or that they uh, coordinate along with the boards that that make that happen. But I, I know that Margaret Littleton is going to have a big role with that. And you'll probably hear more or have heard more about her through the uh, the city of Willis portion of the Willis Hour. Uh, and so if you see Margaret Littleton there at the city, be sure to tell her hello. She did grow up in a small town, so she mentioned to me that she was really excited about being in the city of Willis because she felt like she was going home. So we're glad to have Margaret join in the staff. and and the community there in Willis. Another important thing happening for those city residents in Willis is the fact that the Catahoula water wells are fully functioning and providing water to city residents. You might say, what is that? Well, this has been something that's been in the works now um, for for a good long while and it's a big deal for the city of Willis and for the Willis residents there and in the long run is going to save uh, residents a lot of money and uh, I believe we're going to see the the results and the benefit of the hard work that's been put in by the the city of Willis staff here in the near future. Uh, Those those wells were dug by the city of Willis into the Catahoula Aquifer as a part of the city's groundwater reduction plan. Um, They're both now fully functioning and according to Arthur Failo, director of public works and utilities for the city of Willis. The wells are both supplying water to the city residents. Uh, Their current mode of operation is blending. So, you know, you might wonder this, the water seems to be the same. There's not really a big change. And and that's really kind of, I think, what they were looking for um, is that it would be a, a very smooth transition. The well is located both, or the wells are located in the Pin Oaks subdivision on the west side of Willis, and then also there um, by the Willis Police Department. And uh, Hector Forrester is the city manager, and he's very satisfied with the quality of the water from the new wells, and said we ha- that they haven't received any complaints whatsoever regarding those wells and the quality of the water that they're receiving. So that's a big transition for the city of Willis, and it's in, in full force and I'm excited about that. I think it's a good thing. Um, Another important thing, you know, we love the Willis community because the Willis community is super giving and I mention that every month and this is no different. Um, There is a, a select baseball team there in the city of Willis uh, the Willis Warriors baseball team, and it's a group of young boys. There, uh, one of the moms of, of one of the boys, uh, her name is April Flowers, and she is seeking deployed members of the military uh, for the boys to be able to compile care packages to send to these uh, members of the military. So that's a really neat, a very exciting thing um, for those boys to be a part of. You think about so many young boys really idolize military, and um, you know if they don't have a good uh, concept of the military. 
military, what a what better way to express the value of their service and to show them how very important that is. And so these young men, the Willis Warriors baseball team, are currently collecting items for care packages. And they're also uh, asking if you know of a deployed member of the military, please get in touch with them um, by the 25th of this month. April Flowers can be contacted at 936 936- 4431765 and she is compiling um you know, items, they're getting stuff together. So if you want to be a part of that, maybe you have some things you'd like to put in those care packages or donate towards that. Um, More importantly, though, they're looking for some deployed members of the military to be able to support, to send these to. So maybe you have a spouse or a son or a daughter, uh, a niece or nephew, a friend, a neighbor that's currently deployed. Be sure to give them a call uh, to get that, that, that individual's information to them so they can send them a care package. I just think that is absolutely awesome. And it's the uh, the members of the Willis Warriors baseball team making a difference in the Willis community. Um, things that are coming up in Willis here in the near future. The February issue hit stands February 4th, so you'll want to pick that up to see what's happening in Willis in the month of February and going into the new year. And so I just want to encourage you, um, one of the things that I wanted to be sure to mention today, Operation Graduation is a great organization. It's a a group of parents and students that puts together an awesome event for the night of uh, Willis High School's graduation, and they are hosting to raise funds for this event to keep kids safe and off the streets. Uh, They are... Uh, putting together the event for Operation Graduation Night. They're gathering funds to make that happen. And Mr. Wildcat uh, pageant is actually one of those events that's going to support Operation Graduation. It's happening on February 8th at 7 p.m. at the Lynn Lucas Auditorium. And so it's just a great night, a lot of fun, real silly. If you've got kids that are within the Willis School District, um, you know, that might be a really fun night. It's a a clean event for them to come out and enjoy and participate in and it's the Mr. Wildcat pageant and one of the young men in the graduating class of 2014 will be named Mr. Wildcat and assume that uh, title and so it'll be a lot of fun February 8th at 7 p.m. Tickets are on sale right now. I'm sure if you contact um, you know the high school and get in touch with Operation Graduation on Facebook I'm sure you'll be able to pick up some tickets or you can just show up that night February 8th at 7 p.m. at the Lynn Lucas Middle School Auditorium. Now, a couple quick things, and then we're going to close out the program for today here on Lone Star Internet Radio. Um, Political information is coming up. Obviously, the primary um, is coming sooner rather than later. Early voting starts February 18th, and the big day is March 4th. So be sure to get out there and and vote. Um, But but do pick up a copy of 1097's February issue before you do, because it's going to have information about our local candidates. Um, and I, I encourage you to be sure to pick up a copy because it's going to be really good. And you're going to want to know a little bit more about those candidates before you go out and make your voice heard in the uh, the voting boxes. Also, um, coming up on January 30th, a very important thing to note, there's going to be a great forum there at the Community Center in Willis, the North Montgomery County Community Center, a forum. Um, It's hosted by the North Shore Republican Women and Lake Conroe Republican Women uh, co-hosted this event with local candidates um, where they're going to be sharing about their platform uh, platforms I should say and uh, it's a really great event that's on January 30th um, and I do believe it starts at 7 p.m. it's at the North uh, the North Montgomery County Community Center there in Willis and so be sure to get out there hear what's going on with the candidates pick up your February copy Um, it comes out February 4th you'll hear all about these events also, something to close out today, the Semper Fi Bowl, uh, Semper Fidelis Bowl that was held in Carson, California. We went out and covered that. Our very own coach, Audie Jackson, and senior Chris Platt participated in this. We're, we're called out to California to be a part of a high school bowl game hosted by the United States Marine Corps, and it's a big deal. We're going to talk about it in the February issue of 1097. Be sure to pick up your copy. We'll have full coverage of it. We were the only local uh, news organization present and real excited about being able to share about this really cool event with all of you. Uh, Again, thanks for having us today here on Lone Star Internet Radio for the Willis Hour. It was a lot of fun to be here with you today. Also, be sure to visit us online at www.1097.net. I'm Lauren Swanke, and I'm with 1097 Willis Monthly News. Thanks for listening. You're listening to the Willis Hour on IRLoneStar.com. Hey, everyone. This is Tina, your host from Retro Saturdays. 
I wanted to invite you to visit the Lone Star Studios here in downtown Conroe, Texas. We are all volunteers here, and we need your help in serving the Montgomery County area. Radio media is a fun field to be in. Lone Star Internet Radio serves Montgomery County with news, current events, local programming, and of course, music. If you are interested in volunteering and sharing your talents in media, go to IRLoneStar.com and let us hear from you. Lone Star Internet Radio, serving Montgomery County from the heart of downtown Conroe.